All right, today we're gonna review Transformers Age of Extinction. We're gonna give it a grade A through F, but we're gonna give the grade at the end of the episode. But before we hop into it, only thing that movie breakdown is a movie review series. We look at new or old movies, give them a grade A through F, plus and minus to do counting. Is there a movie you want to review, want me to review? Let me know. Please put in the comment section below and I'll get to it as best I can. I just wanna rush through this opening, cause I just wanna hop right into this review. But, yeah, give everything due time. And today we're gonna review, like I said, 2014's Transformers Age of Extinction. So what's this movie about? Well, after the events of Transformers 3, Dark of the Moon, pretty much all Transformers are considered a threat to humanity, and humanity is now hunting them down, and Optimus Prime is in hiding with the rest of the Autobots, and they pretty much have to get the other Autobots together, and they are saved by a mechanic named I'm gonna call him Aaron Yeager, but <laughs> that's Attack on Titans. Um, Cade Yeager, who the guy that saves Optimus Prime, and because of that, they team up together to pretty much stop the government and this evil bounty hunter and save the day. That's the gist. Matter of fact, this movie is a really selfish movie. It's kind of like the Optimus Prime's Optimus Prime. It's kind of like the Autobots survival movie. Which, that sounds actually pretty cool. But this movie doesn't execute that plot point well. There's a lot of stuff that happens in this movie that I don't know how to explain. So, I'm going to do my best here. Alright, hear me out. So, the things I liked. The Dinobots. I like the Dinobots. Um... Optimus Prime's new look. I thought that was kind of cool. The setup for the night storyline that Optimus Prime is one of the last knights. And they, they used some of the music from the original Transformers, which is cool. I appreciate that. So that was cool. That's, a, that's about it. This movie actually let me f feel really flat going back and reviewing. Yes, it's a Transformers movie. Yes, the action, which I do like some of the action. It was kind of cool but that's pretty much it and then towards the end it's just a giant city brawl again where they're destroying I forgot what city it's not Hong Kong but I forgot what city that's in China that they're destroying they're just Beijing maybe they're just destroying the city and just blowing it up I do not know what city it was in so okay the dislikes character assassinations they destroyed Bumblebee's whole character. Like him in the first three movies, he was kind of like the silent protector of Sam. He's like by Sam the whole time. In this movie, Bumblebee is like a teenager and he's acting a fool and destroying things and causing problems. Like this man, Bumblebee, not a man. This a Transformer is like been around for centuries. He has done missions where his intellect regarding I don't know, a copy of him shouldn't set him off to be like, oh, they're making fun of me? I'm the best one there is. You can't touch this. Like, in destroying a replica of Transformers thing. Like, he should have been more well put in that situation. Like, this isn't his first mission. This has been a thousand missions by this point. So, like, character assassinations. Optimus Prime is still just a destroyer for no reason. Just angry, destroying everything. Matter of fact, he actually kills humans in this movie. He said he doesn't. He's like, we're not supposed to hurt humans in this movie. He's like, all humans get these hands. Um, yeah, so. I don't even know where to, like. I'm speechless for this movie, in a sense. Because it's like, the things they did in the first three movies. Yes, they might have been, you know bad or some are good and some are decent they have moments but at least you knew what was going on and how to follow it and you didn't feel like you was watching two different movies in one this movie in a sense was different so like you have the humans who are siding with this alien gun transformer that's not Megatron or Galatron he just uh, I can't think of his name right now but he is just a 
transformer that can turn into a gun and he's a sniper rifle and he's a he's an assassin and he's pretty much bounty hunter and he needs prom to take prom back to the, his original master who created him because they just didn't exist they had a creator so that was going on and he's hunting down the autobots one by one but he's not really hunting down the decepticons because reasons so you have that going on and the humans pretty much are siding with him because there's not really a reason why they're siding. they're just siding with him like the humans understand the humans like hey the destruction of chicago has flipped everything we don't need transformers or decepticons on our planet okay cool and then it was like this guy shows up who's an alien which once again will make you think like why are you here why are you like we're not sided with you we don't trust you like we don't trust the transformers but yet they trust him so that to me is it makes sense to me why the government was trusting of the alien decepticon i don't even know what he is just there um but the autobots knew who he was they're like oh you're what's his name oh no he's hunting us down and then the movie completely throws out Sam Witwicky and Megan Fox and that whole like their whole thing doesn't like they don't exist anymore. The um not Ness, but I can't think of the name of it. I think it was Ness, where like Josh Dumel's character and Tyrese Gibson's character, where they came from, they don't exist anymore. It was like completely everything happened in this movie is a five year gap, but everything that happened in this movie is completely gone. It's washed out, and you're just like, uh, okay, so the events of the first three movies just, besides the Battle of Chicago, that, don't forget, like, you just what happened to Sam? Bumblebee doesn't care about Sam. Alpha Prime doesn't care about Sam. They're just like, we don't trust humans anymore. Did they kill Sam and them? What what happened? And I'm pretty sure Sam wouldn't gone out without a fight like that. And usually the government, you know, stands up against him. What happened to, um, what's his name character? I can't think of his name right now. Who sick the seven agent? What happened to him? Like, what happened to the people in the first three movies? They just completely forgot about their existence. And... We're moving on to Kate Yeager and his daughter who is in high school, but she's dating a 20 year old because he met her when he was a senior and she didn't let her dad know that she had a boyfriend that's been there for apparently a bunch of years. And there's a, Juli a Romeo and Juliet law that they meant to tell us because for some reason, instead of just making a boyfriend who was in high school with her, who was 18, if not 17, who knew how to drive, they got him to make a dude who's older for whatever reason. It, it doesn't. It doesn't matter at the end of the movie either. Like the fact that, okay, this is her boyfriend. All right, we have this issue. They squash after they save the day, and then just like, all right, so you can be my, my, my daughter's boyfriend. All right, cool. Also, TJ Miller's in this movie. He is kind of a dick. So is Mark Wahlberg's character. They're a dick to each other. TJ Miller calls the government on them. The government comes out and try to, you know, capture Prime. And TJ Miller, Mark Wahlberg, his daughter, and the boyfriend all are driving together. And then TJ Miller gets killed. And then they was like, well, you got TJ Miller killed. Okay. And the movie just goes on. <laughs> like, no consequence. Like, there's no, like, oh, I did it for my friend. Like, nope, nothing like that. Which TJ Miller wasn't really a good friend to begin with. This movie is something else. Another thing I just dislike is just like the movie brought in Stanley Tucci. Okay, cool. Cool actor. Cool with him. And then the movie just flips to a whole other scene where like he's now the main protagonist and we're following him trying to escape the Decepticons because the government is trying to make transforming them, which makes their own robots to be like Decepticons and or just be like, I guess, protectors. And they use Megatron's head to make a transformer and of course and Stanley Tucci is like why does it keep we use an Optimus Prime design why is he coming out as Megatron because Megatron's taking over it he takes over it and then the pill I think what it was is able to shape different things into transformers and he wanted to all the cars and I don't know I don't know, Megatron runs away or Galvatron runs away at the end of the movie. I watched this movie. I sat through this and I still just like, it was just action. There's a car chase where the government was chasing down Stanley Tucci and a motorcycle chase. And then the Transformers show up after they capture Ye's, or Kay's daughter. They go up and save Optimus Prime because Optimus Prime gets captured. 
the transformer that we have to go save Optimus Prime. They land in China. Um, and from there, the bounty hunter follows the, the transformers to China. Arthur Prime frees the dino boss that's been sitting there the whole time. Also, by the way, Transformers caused the extinction of the dinosaurs, but whatever. Um, the dino boss show up, Arthur Prime fights the dino bots, and then the dino boss team with the Autobots destroy the Decepticons. Arthur Prime kills the bounty hunter guy, he kills the American soldier dude, government CIA agent guy who beefed with Mark Wahlberg, and then Arthur Prime just flies off into space, and the movie ends. Yeah, that's all my dislikes. It's it's not that good of a movie. It's not. I'm trying to think of like the action maybe, but the movie is so long. It is two hours and forty five minutes. It didn't need to be that long. It really just didn't. Let's go ahead and get in cast and details and all that stuff because this this movie is it's it's really <laughs> bringing me down. <laughs> I'm so disappointed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Age of Extinction Transformers <laughs> came out 2014, it's PG-13, 245 minutes long. The writers and whatnot of this movie you have, well, it gets directed by Michael Bay. The writer is Ethan Cougar. The budget for this movie was $210 million. And it grossed worldwide another billion dollars. Oh my gosh, one billion a hundred and four million. So one point one billion dollars. Gosh, people really love Transformer movies. And the cast and crew. Yeah, Mark Wahlberg played Kate Yeager. He he was an inventor. I'm an inventor. And he was down his luck. Pretty much he, he's going broke and trying to find the next best thing. His daughter's help funding him with some bills. TJ Miller's funding him with everything. They get lucky when they find Optimus Prime and Optimus Prime and the government or Optimus Prime and the Autobots team up with Cade, because Cade's like, well, I brought you to life, and they're attacking you, and you're not a bad guy. You're auto. You know, he, I don't think he knows he's Autobot. I think he's just like, he's a Transformer, and he just protects him. He doesn't really have a reason to do that, but besides, he found him, and he realized Optimus Prime wasn't going to kill him, but he was Optimus Prime was shooting at them. I don't know. He was really calm about this. Maybe because he remembered the events of the Autobots, but I don't. I don't know. I'm not sure why he actually. Besides, he's like, oh, I know, I got you back to health. He didn't really need to, like, save Optimus. And then until Optimus saved him again because the government was going to kill his daughter. So Optimus saved Cade. And so Cade's like, all right, well, Optimus, you saved me. Now I'm going to save you again. And we're going to get through this together for whatever reason. But that was pretty much it. They were going to get find the rest of the Autobots. They did that pretty early within the first hour of the movie. And from there, it was like... All right, we're going to fight the Decepticons. All right, cool. You have Nicole Peltz Beckman, who plays Tessa. She's a daughter. She was there, a plot device for Kay to do certain stuff. Like, if she got in trouble or got, in, got stuck, he would go save her and whatnot. Like, that's pretty much what she was there for. Um, she like is funding K to begin the movie, but then the dynamic switch from her being like the savior of K to like her kind of being the damsel in distress, where K has to go and save her, and then they kind of they kind of team up together to save the Autobots. Like they, he tells them not to get involved and they get involved in the end of the movie, and so I guess she she did more. She's kind of like Megan Fox in the first movie where she actually did stuff. She wasn't really by herself, but she did do some stuff. Did do some stuff. Jack Rayner, who plays Shane, he, he, he was the boyfriend, and he just saved the day at one point. That's all, like, pretty much what it was. Stanley Tucci, who plays Josh, Joshua Joyce, he was working for the government, 
just in visionary making transformers and then realized that the decepticons took over his stuff so then he was like all right i'm gonna Make sure the government and the Decepticons don't get the pill, and I'm going to make sure the Autobots get in. He teams with the Autobots, and there's that. I don't, I don't know. He was, he was all right. All right. Uh, Kelsey Grammer, who played Harno Actinger, he's the bad guy. He wants to destroy Decepticons and Transformers, but willing to team up with the Bounty Hunter Transformer. Yeah. Titus. Wellenver, who played James Savoy, he's the bad guy. He's the grunt guy. Or Mark Warburg takes him out. TJ Miller, who played Lucas Flannery, he was there to begin the movie. He causes the government to show up. Then try to team up with Mark Warburg and gets killed. There you go. There you go. And I just want to mention like Lockdown, he's the bounty hunter character. He's pretty much the main villain. Cool design. The gun thing, kind of cool. He's not Galvatron, but he was pretty much there to capture Optimus Prime and take him back to, I guess, the creator. But he's going to kill all the other Autobots to do so. And he's working with the government f to search down the search down the Autobots. To me, it was like, why did the government trust him? They did. And um, he pretty much said, I don't give a crap about humans. So, it, it, yeah, he was all right. Just a, a, a boss of fighting in the movie and try to build up the next movie. Galvatron, I... The fact that Galvatron's in this movie is kind of a wasted character. Like, he was just a reason to have multiple Transformers to fight the Autobots, most of the Decepticons to fight the Autobots. It, he wasn't really worth anything, and then he runs away at the end of the movie, so it was like, what's the point? I, I don't know if he was at the world domination. I, he was just there. Bumblebee's character assassination is horrible. I already talked about that. I don't like how they handled Bumblebee in this movie. They made him went from like a soldier to like a kid and being like childish and causing problems. It was like, what? Like, he's... Optimus Prime, like, right-hand, well, I ain't sure he's his right-hand man, but he's, like, the guy who's been next to Optimus Prime, his sidekick, for all these movies. And also, his character just flips because Sam Witwick, he's not in this movie. And then Optimus Prime, just Optimus Prime, like a design. Any other thoughts? The Dinobot showed up was cool. Optimus Prime's speech to him was kind of cool. I do like the jokes the two characters, the two other Autobots uh, have, where, like, oh, I thought he was going to turn to a bigger car. He didn't turn to a giant dinosaur. But what if they turn to the dinosaur, they don't turn back to the regular Transformer self. They just fight in a dinosaur form, and they help the Autobots save the day. It was like, okay, cool. Like, But that part happens in the last like 20 minutes of the movie. Like, legit. And the movie just ends. It just ends. It's not really an actual conclusion. Like, they fly away, and you just left there like wondering, where everybody else is at? I'm just probably fly away. I guess he can fly without jet fire. But he just flies away, and you're just like, huh. That's in the movie. All right. Cool. Cool beans. Is this a Friday night movie? No. Don't waste your Friday night movie watching your friends and family. This is not that movie to watch where everybody, y'all will be bored out of your mind. The movie is two hours and 45 minutes. It is long. It doesn't need to be that long. The the flips, the half the movie being in China and they're running around and it's just like, where, where are we going with this? Like, why, why China? Like, it made no sense. Why? It just flipped. And storyline wise, it's like, oh, okay. Like, I only think I know the base was in China as far as like, oh, it doesn't even make sense why they just moved it. They just picked up and moved to China in the middle of the movie. Like, it wasn't like a deal or anything. It was just kind of like, yeah, we're going to just move our location here. And here we are. And now Megatron's or Galvatron's here. And Galvatron's taking over the Decepticons and just another city to destroy. Yeah, it's this movie's it's yeah. All right, grading time. I'm gonna grade Transformers: Age of Extinction, 2014. This movie gets a D for me. It's not an F. Like it's not unwatchable. You can watch this and you can have some good time in this movie. There's some jokes in here that make you laugh. It's just a long movie. There's some action sequences that are pretty cool, but like it's a Transformers movie and just 
after you see all the destruction of all the other ones, it's just like, oh, okay, what's the point of this? Like, it's metal clashing against metal. It's, it's all right. It's, it's a D. A 65%. IMDb gives this movie a 5.6 out of 10. That is an F. Rotten Tomato critics give it an 18%. That is also an F. And the audience give this movie a 50%, which is also an F. So I gave it the highest grade <laughs> there is. It's not, it's not a horrible movie where you're like, this is complete trash. I can't watch it. Like You can watch this movie, especially this is my first time seeing it. So... I, I did enjoy some action sequences. I did enjoy it. it. Just this movie just sucked the life out of me, man. But it's not an elf. It's not. It's not so terrible where you're like, Last Airbender. <laughs> it's not Last Airbender. Mortal Kombat Annihilation. It's not on that level yet. It wasn't there. And the movie I have to f like legit. Just forced my way through where I didn't get like any bit of like joy out of it. Then it would have been an F, but I got some joy. So a D, a D will suffice. If you've seen Transformer Ages of Extinction, what did you think? Please put in the comment section below on that. See you guys next episode of Movie Breakdowns and keep being awesome. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. I really appreciate that. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. If there's a review you want me to watch or do, let me know. Please put it in the comment section below this video. Also, you want to watch the last episode of Movie Breakdowns. It's right there. Just got to click on it and you'll be able to watch it. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Love y'all. And keep being awesome.